Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. In today's video, I will be talking about the coronavirus. What states have been affected by the coronavirus? So if you want to learn more, then make sure you keep watching. But first, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Let's go! So I am a nerd at heart, and one fun fact in regards to why this virus is called the coronavirus is because the term corona is derived from latin and in latin corona means crown right so this little cell has all these little spikes on it so it looks like it's wearing a crown hence the term corona virus or if you want to put the English accent into it, coronavirus. But yeah, I thought that's pretty cool. Okay, so today, as previously mentioned, today I will be discussing the coronavirus and there's been a lot of the inaccuracies that are spread online are alarming. Remember, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true, okay? You have to do your research. So yes, there have been strains of prior coronaviruses before, but this is a new strain of coronavirus. It's kind of how every year you have to get a flu shot for those of you that get a flu shot because viruses can change and they can mutate. And that is essentially what happened in this situation. I saw a video or a picture of someone saying, don't be scared, this coronavirus has been around before, don't let them lie to you. And they showed a picture of a Lysol can um, and it circled coronavirus. Yes, coronavirus has been around, but this is a new strain of a coronavirus, hence the name. So going forward, when you see, instead of me typing this out, I will abbreviate it in this manner. <laughs> Honestly, is it any shorter? Not that much. But this strain of coronavirus is the 2019 NCOV, right? So what does this stand for? 2019 novel coronavirus. And so I would like to give credit where credit is due. A lot of my uh, facts came from Dr. Bronze, Medscape, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They are, the, especially the CDC, they are the big guns in tracking things uh, here in the United States. So this is a new virus, and that's why it's called 2019 Novel Coronavirus. So for 2019, the Novel Coronavirus, and my font, was all in caps, so this is the actual correct way to write it, lowercase, not that it matters, but <laughs> lowercase n, c, lowercase o, and v. So as of February 10, 2020, there have been 12 people positive in the United States for the 2019 novel coronavirus. There are pending 68 people that we're still waiting on to see if they're positive. The states that have been positive for the coronavirus Washington, California, Arizona, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Massachusetts. I live in the state of Florida. There's been a lot of, I live in the state of Florida and there has been a lot of concern, especially because we attract so much tourism. A lot of people have said, oh, we have confirmed coronavirus in our state. No, that is not true. As of February 10, 2020, we have no cases of coronavirus in our state of florida so really as of right now so as of right now only six states have people positive for the coronavirus on a global scale these are the countries that have confirmed cases of coronavirus and they are listed here i will let you you can read this on your own or pause it and view it but pretty much the majority of the world has been affected. I don't see any cases in Central or South America or even Africa. So what's the incubation period? And for those that aren't in the healthcare field, what, what the heck is incubation period, right? So incubation period is the time that you are exposed to, let's say a viral illness like this coronavirus, and then from the first time where you're displaying signs and symptoms. And there's a pretty big window. It ranges from two days to two weeks, and that's according to the CDC. And transmission is believed to occur via respiratory droplets from coughing and sneezing. What is the mortality rate of the 2019 coronavirus? The mortality rate is around 3%. Who is most at risk? 
Well, right now, according to the World Health Organization, cases in China have been in adults older than 40 with a 78% male predominance. That's interesting, right? Um, males seem to be affected more by this virus than females. 32% of patients had an underlying disease. So comorbidity or underlying disease just means something else is going on. Maybe they have diabetes or maybe they have COPD, um, asthma, something else. And then they get this virus and because they already had either, they already had a, an increased susceptibility due to their underlying condition, these patients are more affected. Which is kind of scary because I have asthma, so. What is the most common symptom of the 2019 novel coronavirus? Well, they have ranged from no symptoms to mild symptoms like severe illness and mortality. So in a paper by, I can't, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this correctly, by this individual and colleagues, they reported that the most common clinical finding was fever in 98% of the cases, followed by cough, myalgia, which means like muscle aches and fatigue headache, sputum production, so coughing up phlegm, and diarrhea were less common. The clinical course was characterized by the development of dyspnea, which is trouble breathing, hard time catching your breath, in 55% of patients, and lymphopenia in 66% of patients. So, penia means lack of lymph is for the lymphocytes, so lack of lymphocytes in 66% of individuals. So really what we're seeing is these individuals initially are presenting with fever. That's the most common symptom. How is the 2019 novel coronavirus diagnosed? Um, right now I work at a retail clinic and um, patients have come and they have expressed a wish in being tested for coronavirus. Thankfully, none of them have recently traveled from China, which is a major risk factor for them actually having coronavirus. But there is currently no tests that we can do in the healthcare setting. So the test that is being done, a real-time reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction or RRT-PCR. And currently in the United States, diagnostic testing for the coronavirus can only be conducted by the CDC. So that means you can't go to your primary care provider and say, hey, test me for coronavirus. I just came back from China, right? If there is a suspected case of coronavirus, as healthcare providers, we are to contact the CDC and then they take over from there in regards to testing these individuals and diagnosing them. So, oh, how to prevent 2019 novel coronavirus? Well, it kind of seems common sense, but you want to avoid contact with individuals affected by the coronavirus, right? If you are in the healthcare field, you pretty much are using every kind of PPE out there. They want you to use contact airborne precautions before entering a room of a patient with confirmed or even a suspected case of the 2019 novel coronavirus. And that's what you are seeing in China. These individuals are in pretty much hazmat suits from head to toe to prevent getting this coronavirus. So hopefully this gives you more information and educates you a little bit more in regards to this condition, how to prevent it, and the signs and symptoms that you would see if someone had the coronavirus. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said before, make sure that you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe, make sure you turn on that notification bell. I want to get monetized. Please help me out. Thank you. Mm -hmm.